Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johns, and this is Studio Talk. And today I'm going to talk about our mic preamps. When I say mic preamps, external mic preamps, like upgraded ones like a Neve or an API, or particularly a clone of one of those particular microphones, are they really going to make that much of a difference in your recording? And when should you consider buying one, or should you just consider skipping them all together? Now, I get asked this question a lot. I'm asked a lot, what mic preamps do I recommend, you know, and why, and what's advantages over one versus the other? And, and, and those are relatively easy, easy questions to answer. But I think before that, we've really got to touch base on the fact that you're, you're sitting, most likely, you're sitting at home in your project studio, and you're trying to figure out where to invest your money next, okay? And where are you going to get your ROI, your return on your investment of, of spending that money, and how much of a difference is it going to make? So let me get one thing answered out of the gate. And some people who are passionate about their mic preamps are probably going to say, what is this guy talking about? But I've been doing this a long time, and I'm just going to share my particular perspective on it. Our upgraded mic preamps, okay, are they going to transform your music? Are they going to take it to the next level? And the simple answer to that question is no, they're not. They're not. Are they going to make a difference? Answer to that question is it depends, okay? Okay. So let's start with that. Depends on what. But before we get to that, let's kind of get a little bit of a grasp of the history of this, okay? The majority of music that many people came to know and love, and, and even Kiss today, all my kids today still go back and listen to music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? And if you're working in a major studio during those times, they didn't bring external microphone preamps into the studio for the most part. And if they did, it was an exception, okay? Okay. They pretty much decided, okay, what console sound do I want to go with? Do I want to go with an API? Do I want to go with a Neve? Do I want to go with an SSL? Which one is best suited for me? And they're making that decision on many factors. Um, and most of it predominantly is going to be in the EQ of it, the overall sound of the board, okay? And, of course, the preamps make a difference there, okay? It's an all-in-one package, and so that's how these names became so revered, and justifiably so. All three of the brands that I just mentioned have a, have a long storied history of producing outstanding products um, that we have learned to all uh, grow and love to this day. So, you know, as it involved, external mic preamps really didn't start to really come into the fold until really the mid to late 2000s. Okay, and then throughout today, that's when the home studio market began to expand tremendously uh, because of the advent of digital recording. And so obviously your average home user was not going to go out and buy a Neve console, right? So they wanted to have some of these things, and that's when you saw a lot of these things start to come about. And then later on, uh, API developed the Lunchbox. It was slow to take off and has now exploded with many, many, many wonderful, wonderful options, okay? And so it's important to get a perspective on that because I think a lot of people misunderstand um, really what a mic preamp is going to ultimately do, them, do for them. So let's talk about the characteristics of probably the two most popular uh, names when it comes to uh, mic preamps. You have API and you have Neve, okay? API is known for a mid-range bump, okay? a more aggressive style with a great on drums, okay? Uh, great on electric guitar, great on bass in certain settings, okay? And so when you want that up front, right there kind of tone, you're going to get that mid-range bump for an API. Whereas a Neve is known for that warm, nice uh, bottom low end. You know, that's what we call, many of us call like a smoothness, right, to it. And they bring that particular character. But keep in mind, keep in mind, um, to get the most out of a mic preamp, you're going to really need a good microphone. The, if, if I had to pick between the two, between a good mic preamp and a great microphone, hands down without question, I'm going with the microphone first, first and foremost, because a great microphone will make a difference in cheaper, less expensive preamps that we find in interfaces. Now, let's talk about interfaces for a second, and then I'll come back to that. When it comes to interfaces, when this whole thing, home recording, started to explode, it was really all about conversion. That was the number one priority for every manufacturer 
of, 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 of recording interfaces for the home studio market. Um, and so they were all chasing that next conversion getting up there. The microphone preamps that came in the majority of those interfaces were subpar to say the least. They were not very good, okay? And so because of that, they chased the whole converter thing, and we saw leaps and bounds every couple of years in quality of conversion. Well, today, you're really splitting hairs between conversion, and don't let anybody tell you any difference. I'm talking about the difference is going to make a difference to the end user, not to you and your ears in your studio. Your end user is not going to hear what you hear in your studio. They're going to hear it on different devices across uh, many different environments, okay? So ultimately, you know, inter- uh, uh, converters have gotten so good these days that simply what what high-end interfaces before, like when you're searching for the difference between a mid-level interface and a high-level interface today is not as much about conversion as it is the analog circuitry within. And you can get some very, very, very good, crisp, clean microphone preamps uh, in, in, in more expensive interfaces today because they can spend more money, whereas the lesser expensive interfaces, they have to make cost-cutting uh, measures somewhere. That's uh, I mean, we can all should be able to understand that. You know, to expect something that's going to cost you $500 that is going to perform overall, looking at the big picture of it, with something that's going to cost you $1,500 or $2,000 is simply not realistic. So those are the differences making. Yes, is conversion continuing to get better? It is, okay? But that's not about what we're talking about today. We're talking about microphone preamps. But it's important to put that all into perspective because many young people didn't go through that and they don't know kind of what got us to where we are, which really opens up the discussion a lot. Now, a good microphone preamp will make a difference. There's no question. I've got numerous a uh, combination of a, a <laughs> API and Neve uh, microphone preamps here in my studio, and I use them for, for the various reasons that I talked about before. But, but if you take a, 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 you know take you, you take one of those microphone um, preamps and you pair it with an inexpensive or lower quality microphone, maybe a large diaphragm condenser, um, it's not going to yield you the same difference as it would. You're not going to be able to really get the feel and the vibe of that microphone preamp as much as you are with a better quality, a more higher end. I'm not suggesting you have to go to the moon for that, but 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 you know when you get a three or four hundred dollar microphone, that's what you can expect to get. We've all been there. We've all had budgets that we have to to fall within, and we make do and get by with the best that we can. But we should understand there is better out there, and those are things that will make a difference. You know, well, you could argue, well, Barry, you just talked about guitar and drums. Aren't when you're talking about micing guitar amp, isn't the number one mic used on that an SM57? Yes, typically along with a Royer 121 or something along those lines. There are other options to choose as well. And then, well, what about the snare drum? Wouldn't you argue, Barry, that the snare drum is the mo- one of the most important tracks in any, any particular recording? Yes, I would argue that your snare and your vocal are probably your two most important. And aren't they mic'd with SM57s? Yes, okay? But that's an area where you're not looking for warmth. You're not looking for depth. You're looking for sharp attack. And that's where an API comes in. Great for that. Really great for that, okay? And so... But overall, the majority of your recordings are not recorded with those uh, lesser expensive microphones. You know, they're recorded with much nicer microphones. And I said before, the number one track on any particular uh, song is going to be your lead vocal. That's going to be your number one. That's where you're going to invest your most money. Get the very best mic that you can get and the very best mic preamp paired with it for the style of music that you're recording. But at the end of the day... Uh, upgrading your mic preamps in your project studio, they'll make a difference, but it all depends on if all the components are lined up. But no matter what, let me explain this to you, no matter what, they will never, ever, ever make a huge difference. It's all incremental things that you gain by doing these things. There's no one magic pill out there that's just going to go, wow, man, my recordings are at the professional level right away. That's just not how these things work. So understand, if you're going out there and investing $600 to $1,000 on one channel mic preamp, 
and you get it and you start listening to it, first you're going to get the placebo effect in hearing things that really aren't there. Everybody's guilty of it, including me. Um, but you're going to get that initially. But after the dust starts settling in, you realize this really isn't making that much of a difference because, you know, I've kind of got my $300 microphone. I'm running through it and I just don't really hear the difference. And you know what? You're probably right. You're probably right. You're not hearing that big of a difference. And even if you go get a $4,000 microphone and run it through that preamp, it's still going to be subtle increments. It's not going to be this massive thing that's just going to blow things up, right? You know, I argue many times more that if you've got a solid interface with really good mic preamps built into it, which requires an investment, if you've got that, you're better off probably if you want to invest in external hardware, investing in some really good quality compressors where that's really probably going to make a bigger difference in your recordings overall. But then again, you don't really need any of that. You can do everything in the box and create wonderful, wonderful sounding recordings. So if you have an expectation that if you're going to go out and spend the money on a mic preamp, is it going to make a huge difference? The bottom line, as I've described before, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make a huge difference. I'm sorry. Is it going to make a difference? Yes, if every other component in line is in play, right? But you change out one of those things and put a subpar component in there, well, then that's going to affect um, the it's going to affect the differences between being able to capitalize on what that mic preamp, because at the end of the day, the purpose of a mic preamp is to get it to the proper level to match all other devices that it's going to be connected to. That's the number one goal of a mic preamp. It's called a mic preamp. Preamplify that signal, get it to the right level. And a good quality microphone preamp is going to do that. It's going to do it extremely well, and it's going to be clear and transparent. And then also, depending on the mic preamp, give you some character to it, a little vibe going on, a little mojo that happens. But again, that vibe and that mojo is subtle. It's not going to rock the house. So if you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, you know, all that stuff out there. Most importantly, hit that subscribe button, help me grow the channel. Uh, leave me some comments down below. Tell me what you think. I'm sure some people are going to go in there and probably say, my mic preamps have changed my world. If they have, then I'm so I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. But, but in my experience, that hasn't been the case. Are they worth the investment? Like I said, it depends. Obviously, I think so because I own them, right? And I have no intentions of selling them, right? But could I get by today with the interface that I have, which happens to be a, an RME interface, could I get by with the microphone preamps in there? You better freaking believe I can because they're very good microphone preamps. They don't have the character we're talking about, but they have the pristine clarity and they certainly amplify the microphone the way I need it to, okay? So uh, like I said, leave some comments down below, but until next time, hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.